Hello everyone and welcome to My Porch Prints. My name is Kira and today I'm going to be showing you 20 different journal covers. Uh, this is just going to be a quick and simple video to give you some ideas for your next journal project and we will have links for tutorials for nearly all of these down in the description box so if you see a journal you like and you want to know exactly how we made it you will find all of those links down there for you. All right, so let's go ahead and begin by talking about spines. Now, when your journal is sitting on a shelf, the first thing you're going to see is the spine, so they ought not to be overlooked. When you're thinking about a spine you want, you might want to decide if you want a square spine or a rounded spine. You can kind of see an example of that here. And if you're going for a rounded spine, you might want to try like some stitching on it perhaps, or maybe you want to have your stitching from your signature showing on the outside like this one here or maybe you want to have a hidden spine where the stitching is on the inside and you decorate the outside with something else. And you could also use tie-ins where you tie your signatures into the book and that's gonna give you kind of these pretty ribbons that are on the outside of the spine where you can kind of see them showing and tie them into bows or things like that. And if you don't like a super messy look, you could go a little bit cleaner, maybe something kind of industrial and use brad binding where you can see the brads on the outside. Or if you want the brads to be featured less, you could just do them at the top and bottom and maybe do some faux cross stitching or real cross stitching if that's your preference. Or maybe like a lace spine like this. Um, you might also want to try a corset spine. We have a faux corset spine tutorial and we also used um, like some dangles here, some charms just to make the spine a little more interesting. And you can go even further using ephemera pieces like these butterflies we did here to make kind of like a 3D collage on the spine. Or maybe you don't like spines at all. You could also use, you know, just rings to bind your journal and not have a spine or just cover it with fabric or paper and keep it plain. All right, now that we kind of know what we want for our spine, I'm gonna kind of walk through journals uh, one by one here. So this one is just covered with paper and nothing else. Um, you can see that it's pretty simple overall, kind of a more basic journal. So to keep things from getting too messy, um, the woman who put this journal together obviously just wanted to keep things you know, kind of neutral using just a couple of pieces of paper um, and overall just keeping things really, you know, basic. And this is a very easy way to cover your journal if you aren't looking for something too complex. But if you want to, you can always take things a step further. So this journal is kind of mixed media. It's got, you know, scraps of lace, charms, bulb pins, flowers, hardware, all sorts of little goodies, um, little uh, like uh, fussy cuts that have been inked. And it does have some layered paper kind of like stacking up and making a very, you know, um, messy sort of handmade journal cover. And you can still leave, you know, parts of the journal blank or you can cover the whole thing. It's really kind of up to you. Um, um, another fun idea with a journal is to try to make it sort of interactive. So you can see with this journal here, um, I just recently did a tutorial for this one. I did use paper as kind of the base on top of some fabric. Um, I did some extra decorating, made like a little, you know, collage up in the corner. But I also created this envelope pocket so that you can have like little pieces of ephemera that tuck into it. And that can be just fun to make your journal cover more than just a plain cover. It actually has things on it that move, that you can touch and feel and interact with and it's just sort of a, an extra fun way to decorate your journal with sorts of you know charms lace things that you can kind of like really get into and uh, check out and make it just as interesting as the rest of the journal all right, up next, I've got this one here. Uh, this is one that my sister made and she did that pretty collage on like the spine with these butterfly fussy cuts. And you just kind of um, print out like a larger and smaller butterfly, glue them one on top of the other, and then you can just take the wings and pinch them. And that gives it kind of like a 3D pop effect. And that can be like a really fun, you know, way to make your journal a little more interesting is to give it that interactive pop. So. Right here on the cover, you can see that there's sort of a stack of envelopes here uh, tied with a ribbon and you can kind of uh, fold things out and have them pop up and it's just a little bit more, you know, interactive, a little fun. And you can definitely layer. So here, this actually is multiple envelopes. So you can continue to open it up and find, you know, more pockets, more goodies, more things like that. And that's, that's definitely a fun thing to try with your journal. So if you haven't tried like an interactive cover, I 
would highly recommend it. It's it's a very fun way to decorate your cover and just keep it, you know, a little more interesting. And you can see this has a lot of lace and buttons and beads and things like that. But if you want to, you can definitely go with a more like um, a grungy look. And instead of going for something kind of light like this, you could grab hardware. So for this next journal, um, I actually just took this like brooch that I bought at a craft store and just glued it to the front, which gives the journal some pop and it sort of matches the brad binding and some of the hardware that I put on the front and back, um, just to kind of give it a more industrial feel. And this is using, you know, lace doilies, um, cardboard, things like that to kind of match all of the colors and keep it very, you know, harmonious. Um, another thing you could try with your journal cover, if you kind of like that hardware look, is adding things like book plates here. I've got this little one that's sort of interactive with this little label inside of it. And then you could also use things uh, like this bulldog clip I've got on the side, kind of is working like a handle. Um, and I've also added uh, this magnifying glass to the front with a little pop-up butterfly inside. And you could make like a shaker, add beads or something like that if you want. This is just kind of what I did. And then I added some real flowers to the spine and then, you know, paper on the back, keeping things pretty simple on the back since I usually set the journal down. You know, if you're going to write in it, you don't always want something popping up on the back. But um, this journal I've definitely made with a like a thicker cardboard and it's got a three inch spine, which gives it a very thick look. So if you like that, you could certainly try that for your journal as well. Kind of give it a, a you know, heavier feel. Or maybe you like a softer feel. So for this journal, I actually made it like a, a true soft cover. This is kind of like, um, like a plush cover journal. And this one was made, it's a little bit more of an intense process. Um, there is no paper involved, just cardboard and plush. So if you don't have the time to try something like this, you don't have to, but it can be kind of a unique uh, journal. It really stands out from every other journal in my collection. I really like the way it feels. It's like holding a pillow. So um, if you want to give this a try, I would recommend it. It was fun. I'd like to do another sometime. It's just a little bit different. All right. So moving on to our next journal in the collection, you can see this one also uses fabric, but in a much simpler way. Basically, it's just scraps of fabric that have been uh, glued and layered on top of one another. You know, if you've got a bunch of different fabrics, this is a really cool way to use them on a journal cover. Very scrappy, very quilted, you know, kind of its own unique thing. Mixing and matching patterns. Um, you could also add, you know, sewing and things like that just to give it more detail if you want. So if you don't want to use paper, on your cover. Um, this can be kind of a fun way to use up some fabric scraps you might have just sort of covering both the inside and the outside and just sort of having fun with it. And with this journal, you can kind of see it seemed to be kind of like what they had on hand. It's sort of floral themed, but overall it doesn't have like a, a strict theme to it. And that's something you can do with the cover if you want to, is sort of center it around a theme of some sort. So for this one, this was my Jane Austen journal. This one's quite old, definitely starting to kind of have some wear and tear to it. Uh, certain things are not holding on quite like they used to. but. Um, with this journal, I sort of tried to focus it around like certain shapes, certain colors, and just kind of things that reminded me of Jane Austen. So that kind of helped me sort of pick a theme for decorating the cover. And I did go with a soft cover here. You can see that a soft cover journal uh, is just a journal made with a thinner cardboard. So it's got a little bit more bend to it. And I kind of used like a, like a belt here to kind of keep everything together. And speaking of themed journals, this is my Edgar Allan Poe journal. It can be kind of fun if you haven't tried to dip into a different color palette. So this one is like all kind of dark and gothic to go for Halloween. And again, I went with some hardware here, but I painted it black so that everything sort of matches. Um, it is a paper cover, but I did add like this photo in the center to kind of give it a focal point. And you know, it really, it's pretty easy to know what this journal is about if you just pick it up and look at the cover. So um, with this one, I did do the corset spine on the side, the faux corset spine, which I think turned out really pretty. I really liked with the black ribbon and the black lace. And then I also made like a, a dangle to go on the spine here. And it's got, you know, lots of um, just scrap ribbons that I put in a big cluster here, some charms in it, just bold pin to the top of the journal. And yeah, so this one wasn't actually as complicated as it looks. And I really liked how it turned out with just sort of sticking with a central theme. 
All right, and speaking of uh, this one, I actually kind of had a theme, which the theme was just mess. <laughs> I was trying to make it look as messy as possible. And I also went with a, uh, uh, like a, another soft cover. You can see again, it's got that bend to it. And with soft covers, they don't necessarily hold the same as hardcover journals. So this one you can see has a really like, you know, solid cover and it's holding its shape pretty well, just kind of keeping that solid, you know, square shape. Whereas this one's a little more organic. So that's something to keep in mind with soft covers. Um, but soft covers allow you to kind of sew through them and do some more unique things that you can't do with a hard cover. So for this one, you know, I did a lot of sewing, some stitching, uh, used several panels of fabric on this one. And this was really fun. I really liked how the spine turned out. And for the cover, I actually did sort of a mixed media collage sort of thing. Um, I used, you know, paper and lots of flowers and just some chipboard. Um, lots of, lot, just really had fun with this one. Um, kind of let myself be free. It still kind of has a focal point with this flower here, but overall it's a lot messier. Um, but I did, I did have a lot of fun with this one. And again, I put one of those belts around it just because it is pretty thick. I may have gone a little overboard with this one, but it's okay to, you know, if you want to try something that's a little bit messier, a little bit more freeform, a soft cover with a collage on it could be pretty cool. And talking about collages here, this is actually my collage cover journal. Um, I really liked how this one turned out. I just used a bunch of fussy cuts and glued them down onto some random scraps of paper. So if you have a lot of scraps or unused fussy cuts, this can be a really cool way to decorate the cover of a journal just by gluing everything down and creating a sort of collage. Um, it's pretty simple too. You can kind of just mindlessly glue things down and just sort of have a lot of fun with it and it doesn't have to be too complex but it still looks really busy which is is fun for me and this whole journal was kind of you know collage -y. it was sort of just a mishmash of things I had so I really liked that the cover sort of stuck with that theme overall you know just having that mishmash sort of effect all right, for the next journal, this is also a collage journal that I did. It's a little bit different. This is a uh, sort of like a photo book that I was keeping dried flowers in, like pressed flowers in. And for this cover, I actually had pieces of paper um, and I just tore them up. So any kit, any paper, if you have scrap papers, they could be from the same kit or different ones. And I just shredded them and I went over the edges with some distress ink. So if you, have, uh, if you haven't heard of distress ink, it's literally just ink in an ink pad that you take on the edges of your paper and I did use um, Mod Podge to glue everything down which caused it to bleed a little bit but I sort of like the effect it's very aged and kind of kind of a unique cover all right now we are getting into our Christmas journals that I made here again I've got one of those simple dangles on the side of the spine with that like corset uh, spine here using lots of buttons and sparkly ribbons and things like that. And then for the actual cover, I went with a quilted design. So this quilt paper actually comes from our shop. And then I just glued squares of fabric on top of it and did some stitching in between them. And it kind of gives it an overall quilted look. So if you have scrap fabric, scrap papers, things like that, you could do kind of like a quilted design, which is sort of fun and unique. And for this Christmas journal, um, I actually went ahead and used some puff tape to give it just a little bit of dimension. That's a really easy way to add dimension to your cover. It's just a little bit of puff tape. And then I had, you know, this frame that I sort of made out of uh, like various ribbons. And I tried to use the same ribbons on the spine as I did on the cover just to make things kind of cohesive and um, use, you know, some sparkly ribbon, things like that, just to give it a little shine. And then I also added lace to the edges. So that kind of gives the journal cover just a little bit of a different shape instead of just a plain square. It's got a little bit of, you know, texture and dimension to it. And if you wanted to go a little bit further, we actually have shadow boxes, uh, like a shadow box template that you can print and fold and make in our shop. And I made one to match this journal here. Uh, but if you wanted to, you could actually glue this onto the cover of your journal. If you don't mind that extra dimension, I've seen people do something like this before. It's kind of where I got the idea. So um, if you like a little bit of pop and you want an interactive cover, this is a way that you could try if you want to do that. Kind of fun. And if you're also kind of talking about that interactive cover, you could do like an envelope cover. So that's kind of talking about how this cover folds. So I've got a magnet inside of this cover here. And so this part just kind of folds out. 
and you kind of have like a journal that folds this way. So this one is a ring bound. Um, I think that this would actually work better not on a ring bound. You see it kind of the, moving the cover around is a little bit of a pain, especially since this journal is not filled. But it is sort of a fun, unique cover if you haven't tried. Um, it's just something a little bit different if you're looking for a new way to open your journal and close your journal that's not just, you know, a basic cover. And speaking of envelope covers, I actually made this journal here. It's my stack of envelopes journal. So this is an entire journal in and of itself. Um, you can see that the cover opens like this and you've got pages on the inside. And it's actually got three sections that open like this. So it's kind of like three mini journals in one. But if you wanted to, you could create something like this or maybe a simplified version of it and glue it down to the front cover of your journal. So it would kind of have like, you know, um, what we talked about earlier, like layering on top of the journal cover and would be kind of interactive. So that's one way that you could use it or you could just make something like this on its own if you haven't tried it before. It's a fun project. And speaking of journal toppers, I've got these two here. So this is actually from our journal topper collection that we have on our Etsy shop. And all you do is you assemble it and create it uh, from the kits and then you can just glue it on top of your journal. And again, you've got like an interactive journal cover here and you could do more decorating. We kind of kept this one plain as an example, but you can see it just kind of goes right on top of the cover like this, or you can put them in the journal, however you want to use them, but they're meant to be journal toppers. Or you could take something like this, my lady suitcase folio and use it the same way. You just kind of, you know, assemble it and then glue it to the front of your journal. And then it opens up and you've got lots of like ephemera and pockets and, you know, goodies inside. And that just kind of takes what's going on inside your journal to the outside of your journal and creates, you know, overall an interactive experience, which can just be kind of extra fun. Or for this journal here, uh, this is a completely different one. This is a little more complex, but I did create this stained glass uh, window in the cover of my journal and I did it in the front and the back cover and this one actually is really fun and really pretty. It's not as hard as it seems but it is a little more complex which is why I wanted to put it towards the end. This is for somebody maybe who just really wants to try something new and when the light shines through it it does have kind of a stained glass effect so if you watch the video tutorial you'll get to see that effect there. And speaking of windows, I also recently did a journal where I did a lace window, which is a very similar concept, but instead of the stained glass print, you can just use any lace that you have on hand and create a sort of see-through window in the cover of your journal like this. And again, it doesn't do anything really special, but it is just kind of fun and extra pretty. And I did take it to the spine where you can also see there's a lace panel and that just sort of makes everything match. And it's just kind of a little bit fun to see the signatures through. And then this is the one I did the cross stitching on. This is faux cross stitched, but it still has the same effect. And you can also add tie-ons to your journal. You can glue them between the front and back cover, or you can do what I did here and just like punch a hole and, you know, thread an eyelet and some ribbon through it. And this allows you to kind of tie your journal closed from the front and back cover, especially if you get like a really thick journal. All right. So um, I think that is going to be all of the journals for today. Um, I hope that you were able to, you know, get some inspiration for your journal cover. Again, if you saw something that you liked and wanted to try, I will have all of it linked down in the description box below for you. And if you're curious about what to put inside your journal, we actually have a video about things to put in your journal. Lots of ideas in that one. So if you haven't seen it, make sure you check it out. But otherwise, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.